Welcome everyone. Uh, this video I'm going to try to demonstrate uh, a spark gap, the importance of a tunable spark gap. Uh, we're going to use this um, uh, the principle that Don Smith and I believe the Capenards um, circuit use um, that they use a uh, 240 volt inverter uh, to supply the power to the circuit and I believe it's the tuning of the spark gap itself that facilitates that um, zero watt energy draw so we're going to use the plasma bulb here um, that's just a 20 centimeter uh, bulb um, standard off the shelf no adjustments made I've got my uh, coil which is a uh, by filer coil um, I wound on a piece of plastic and it is the there's two coils there the two by filer coils there one on top of the other uh, the first one I believe is 90 turns and then the second one overlaying it is a hundred turns um, so we'll use that we'll place that on top of the plasma uh, ball and i'll just turn that plasma ball off so we can show there's the watt meter here um, which just the transformer sitting uh, on its own not powering anything is still drawing 0.4 of a watt so yeah, these are a great idea these little watt meters because you can plug them into any uh, conventional um, 240 volt well you can get 120 volt versions as well 110 volt versions um, and it lets you know whether the appliance is drawing the rated amount or whether it's exceeding it and it might be f you know uh, in the process of failing if it's exceeding its rated amount um, but it's just something to keep in mind that people are using electricity when they think they're not so we're going to use that to demonstrate that whilst this uh, system is running um, the tuning of uh, this spark gap here now this is a, a crude spark gap but the tuning of it um, de will demonst be demonstrated on the watt meter here uh, in a reduction in power consumption down to zero watts um, so we're going to come out of the coil and that's going straight into this jumper lead I've just wound it up a couple of times stuck it to the table so it's clear and obvious into a 10 watt LED light off the shelf light that's not been modified at all uh, out of the light into the green cable into the quick uh, makeshift um, spark gap and doing using this one for two reasons I could use my my good spark gap arrangement uh, but it's a little hard for anyone to see the adjustments or even see the spark um, I'm using this one uh, to show that it you, know, you can do make up one quite crudely um, it would probably need to be a little bit more precise to make it easier for tuning but we're going to use this um, quick knock dot one just to um, to demonstrate it is it is easy you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a spark gap you could make a more efficient one than displayed here quite easily uh, the black tape there is just to give it a black background uh, so we might be able to see the spark and in particular I want to show the color of the spark the color of the spark is important I've noticed that um, sometimes you know, the, the tuning of that spark will uh, still cause a current draw to be seen on the meter and what we're trying to aim for here is a white or a, a bluish white spark as opposed to a purple and I think this is where some people might be going wrong where they 
they assume that they've got their spark gap and, and everything should work. Whereas um, hopefully uh, we can demonstrate that it needs to be a particular spark, which is done by uh, tuning. So we've got 0.4 watts on the meter. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Let's now turn on the uh, plasma tube or plasma ball and by itself uh, let's see if we can get that light on that meter so that we can actually see it um, I apologize for the camera work guys I'm trying to uh, juggle things here it's not easy for me put it that way um, point. 9.6 watts that that's consuming and that's with nothing on the plasma ball so now if we I'll disconnect this um, coil and we'll just place the coil on the plasma ball and see if that changes the wattage okay now we're up to 10.2 watts 10.3 watts 10.4 and that's not connected to anything now we will go and connect up the spark gap uh, sorry the the light and so we'll connect the coil so hard to do with one hand Okay, so we are now connected to that. The light comes on, and we are consuming eleven point one watts. Now you can see in the bottom of the screen the spark great gap is operating. If I can try and arrange that light so it's giving us uh, at least some light on that situation a bit easier to see again I don't have a good camera so this makes it even trickier so we can see that even though we've got a spark gap and I hope you can see the color of the spark gap there uh, to me it appears off camera to be purple and that is not the spark we want we actually need the white bluish and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crudely adjust this I'm just going to tap at it in an attempt to change the distance and aim for that white spark um, and this is not scientific and this is why I do recommend having an adjustable spark gap but I just want to show proof of concept here why some people might not be able to get what they want uh, have their system working the way they were told it would okay so now I think that is still I thought that was close I thought I saw the white spark there when we get that white spark to occur which as I said this is not how you should be doing it uh, but I'm doing it this way just to prove that doesn't require a lot of money thrown at the problem if we can put that camera down just a little and that will make it easier for me to attempt to get this right. Bear with me, I knew it was going to be difficult like this, but I want to show you that this can be done 
without spending your life savings. Okay, that is a whiter spark. And there we go. Now we can see that it's jumping back and forth between drawing power and not drawing power. We got 11.2 watts there now. If I just give it a tiny little tap. And you can hear there's an audible change in the spark when you get it right. And, and that's obviously frequency based. But there is a clear difference in the color of the spark as well. And there we go. You can see on the meter now we're reading, oh, we were reading zero just then. And there we go, zero. So it can be done, um, and and when I've tuned my adjustable spark gap, um, I, I don't usually have to mess around with it anymore. It stays in position and, and continues to draw zero watts. So, you know, that's interesting. You've got, uh, I wish I could, um, of course, off camera I had, this crude setup working constantly like I think that might be it there so we're reading zero zero watts on the meter and the light still running plasma ball still running um, still reading 0, 0 0.0 watts you can have a look at the spark gap there it appears to be whiter than the spark gap when it chews power and i think it just changed back there and went back to a purple and there we have just a little tap so it's slightly further away and we've got white again and back to zero zero so when you've got a a, a much better uh, setup and I have mine on bolts uh, that can be screwed in or out uh, to change that adjustment and it's a very very fine adjustment um, but when you get it right you can hear that audible hiss um, and you see the color change we can even see the color change going on right there um, I know I can see it with a naked eye and you can see the meter in the background is flicking from 0, 0.0 up to the normal usage of 11 or 12. So we see there you can hear that slight hiss. You can see the color changing of the spark gap. And this is why some people aren't getting the 0, 0.0 watts that they are hunting. And it's all to do with the gap the importance of that distance for that gap can mean you have it work a working system or you don't now you can check my other video my very first video uh, was using a similar system to this uh, with extra coils um, which keeps that light lit you know a lot more consistency it sort of fluctuates without you know a capacitor or an extra coil um, the extra coil that I use had a uh, an extra wire wound beside uh, the coil, so it was a it was a dual strand wire. Um, yeah, and so there's two wires side by side. One acts as a capacitor uh, if it's not connected. So that's all the, all I really wanted to point out. Um, is that just because you've got a spark gap doesn't mean you've got the right spark gap and that you can see the fluctuations there you know and hopefully you can see that color as the color changes back to purple it starts consuming power again so something to keep in mind all right guys thanks for watching have a nice day please like share and subscribe